Welcome to One Take. Today we're talking about Attack on Titan, Season 3, Episode 19, also known as Episode 56, titled The Basement. I'm Gil, and I'm talking to my brother, Alon. Say hello, Alon. Hey there. And this, there are going to be spoilers here, because we're doing a full recap and review. So if you haven't seen the episode, I don't know, Alon, why do we always have to tell them this? If you haven't seen the episode... Go watch it, and then come back and watch this video. Yeah, I'm not sure why you would want a recap. Like, do you really enjoy watching just YouTube recaps? Go watch the show. What? You know what, though? I think that maybe our recaps, they might enjoy these so much, they can't even wait. They've got to watch this before they watch the show. But watch the show, then come back and check out our recap. And I should say... I don't read the manga, so there won't be any spoilers from the manga. Oh, you don't read the manga either, right? Nope. Okay, so spoilers for the anime, but we don't read the manga, so there won't be any spoilers beyond episode 56. So, Alon, let's jump right into it. Uh, the episode opens up, Armin wakes up on the wall. So from the last episode, we know he turned into a titan. He ate the colossal titan, Bertolt, and now he's woken up, and he doesn't remember a thing. So one of my favorite parts of the episode happens right here at the beginning. Levi shows up and he tells Aaron to fill Armin in, get him up to speed. <laughs> and I always wonder what they're going to do uh, with scenes like this in a TV show where we know everything that happens and some character doesn't. Are we going to watch them explain everything? So in this case, Aaron goes to tell Armin what happened. It cuts away to a few random characters and then cuts back and Levi's like, so, Aaron, did you tell him everything? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was hilarious that Armin then starts explaining what Aaron <laughs> explained to him during the cutaway. <laughs> right. You think it's so clever that okay, they didn't show you the whole explanation, so now we'll just see Armin's reaction. And Armin's reaction is to explain everything. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> he says, are you telling me the scout regiment is the nine of us here and that's it? I ate Bertolt. <laughs> Uh, but I actually, I actually liked it because as he explained what happened, you saw him reacting to it, and you could see how disgusted he was with the fact that he ate another Titan. You saw how how much you saw the despair in his face when he realized that he was chosen to live over Erwin. And in fact, he asks Levi, "Why did you choose me?" And at first, Levi says. Aaron and Mikasa, they stood up and threatened to draw blood if I didn't pick you, you know, if I saved Erwin. And at first you think, oh, he's not uh, taking responsibility for this. But then Levi says, ultimately, the decision was his to save Armin. And one interesting wrinkle there is he says, specifically, Levi says, however, the final decision to choose you was mine. Mm -hmm. No. I chose this to be the place where Erwin dies. So basically he's saying, I didn't choose to save you. I chose to let Erwin die. And, and Alon, how, how did you interpret? So I think I asked you after the episode. Right. I get confused a lot when we watch these shows. So I asked you, <laughs> why did Levi choose? Uh, um, why did he choose Armin over Erwin? Right. So my interpretation is that he kind of already accepted Erwin's fate of death. If we re recall that scene before Erwin's plan to just charge at the Beast Titan, um, that was actually partially Levi's call. He told Erwin, mm -hmm. I want you to do it. I want you to charge the Beast Titan, sacrifice yourself. This is a suicide mm -hmm. mission. Give up all your hopes and dreams about seeing the basement. Right. Just accept your fate. You're dying for the good of the rest of mankind. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, Levi's basically thinking he may as well be dead right now. That was the suicide mission. He happened to survive, but he shouldn't have. Right. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And actually, in the previous episode, when Levi was going to inject Erwin, you remember Erwin kind of smacked his hand yeah. away. And it seemed like an involuntary movement because then he spoke a line that I think he'd spoken when he was in class years earlier, 
But I, I do wonder if subconsciously Erwin was saying, no, like, this is my time to die. Yeah, I, that's my... I, I do think that Erwin was aware of the situation, mm-hmm. e- e- w- even though he was... You know, he wasn't completely with it, but he right. did understand what was happening, and he decided this should go. This injection should go over to Armin. Let mm-hmm. me die. That's the right yeah. decision. Yeah, I think that's right. And uh, well, actually, was it the right decision though? Do you think it made sense to save Armin mm-hmm. over Erwin? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah. I. I'm not sure. They they yeah. both they throughout the the series they both have come up with great strategies. They're both they both well. I was gonna say they both do well under pressure, but then I remembered <laughs> the scene with Armin where he freaked out and asked mm-hmm. Jean to take over. Right. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I so I went back and forth on this. My first thought was. Exactly what you said. They've both been important. They've both saved the day. So it's sort of either one is fine. You've got to pick one. There's no right answer. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I do think Levi's decision, it didn't feel like a logical one necessarily. The whole concept of I chose this to be the place where Erwin dies because he was prepared to die, that feels like an emotional decision to me. But I've come around to I do think it was right to save Armin because Aaron and Mikasa are both crucial players in this whole thing. So you can't ignore the emotional side of it. If Armin dies and then Aaron and Mikasa lose hope and they're devastated, that could actually be a crushing blow to humanity. Yeah, that's true. You don't want Aaron, one of the only titans you have on your side against you. <laughs> And, yeah, like, um, Aaron, I need you to fight. Like, no, yeah. no, <laughs> exactly. And not only that, but you, you know, like Armin cannot replace Erwin. Like, I, I don't think any. It would take a lot of convincing for people to start looking at Armin the way they look at Erwin. Armin is good at you know strategizing and having his his team follow him, but mm-hmm. he he doesn't he's never led and I don't see him leading as many people as Erwin has for a while. I think maybe no. Levi will start taking on some of the responsibilities Erwin has. So I think there is someone that could take Erwin's spot, you know, in, right. in the in the leadership role. Yeah, that actually that'll be interesting because Levi, I think, he inspires people but I can't imagine him giving that motivational speech that Irwin gave before everyone charged at the Beast Titan. Levi doesn't strike me as a big public speaker, but he might have to step into that role. That'll be yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, I, th- I think we get glimpses of it. You know, I can't remember a specific example, but I think there are instances where he he has been motivational. There are instances where he's just very factual. Right. almost emotionless but there are you do see glimpses i think we're gonna start seeing him start taking on more of that role and caring more about people again to some yeah. degree yeah yeah i think so too and uh and then also a minor point here so when uh when uh, armin wakes up one of the first things he notices is that sasha potato girl is there and she's pretty badly hurt but she's she's alive what is the point of Sasha having been hurt? So far, it seems like this background fact that you almost forget about it. Is there any... Do you think that that's, that that's going to mean anything in a future episode? At first, I thought that maybe it was... So in the episode, two episodes ago, when Armin, you know, we thought was dead, when Erwin was badly injured, I was going through the calculation of who are they going to use the Titan serum on? And it's going to be someone who's close to death. And I took that as, okay, it's got to be either Armin, it's got to be Erwin. And then I thought, hey, it could be at a left field, Sasha, Mm -hmm. because you kind of see her get hurt pretty bad for a second. So I thought I was being clever. (laughs) Uh, But looking back, I wonder if that was just a red herring where they just wanted you to look at that and say, hey, Sasha got hurt real bad. Maybe she's going to turn into a Titan. And they're trying to throw us off the trail. But at the same time, I feel like I'm maybe the only person who thought that. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I have the thought crossed my mind, but it quickly dissipated yeah. because 
her level of importance just is way lower than someone like Armin, <laughs> even Armin. So, <laughs> yeah. But maybe okay, it, maybe so it was there for, as a red herring. You might be right. Maybe. Well, then a few of them head off to the basement. So finally, we're going to see what's in that basement. And it's a pretty emotional scene as they're walking to Aaron's house. Lots of flashbacks. We see Hans. Remember the drunk guy? Yeah. Um, from episode one, who played a role for a few seasons. Lots of sad music. Lots of cutting around the town. You see the whole place in ruins. Uh, and they really take their time getting to the house. So this is an emotional scene. It's also just building suspense because we're finally going to see, you know, after 56 episodes, what's down there. So the the five minutes of stretching this out until we get to the basement, it all worked for me. I didn't get bored. I felt suspense. I felt the emotions of it. Work, did it work for you on your side, or were you like, come on, can we get to the basement uh, already? No, I, I liked it. If, if they didn't end up showing what was inside the basement till the next episode, that might have annoyed right. me, but I, I don't mind the the uh, suspense. Right. It reminded me of Lost, actually. The whole concept of, of there's something down there. We don't know what it is. Let's find out. And then if this was Lost, the episode would have ended right as they opened uh, the door, And then it would have been like a six episode side story you don't care about. And then next season, you'd see what's in the basement. Yeah. I mean, we've waited long enough already. (laughs) We we waited three (laughs) seasons. I'm glad they didn't make us wait one more episode. Right. (laughs) So they find the hatch to the basement. Mm -hmm. They pry a rock off it. They open the hatch. Then they find a door. The key doesn't work. Aaron screwed up again. But if you think a door is going to stop Levi, <laughs> you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> Levi kicks the door open. Now, for a second, did you think it was going to be booby-trapped down there? <laughs> uh, yeah, for a split second. But, I mean, why would it be booby-trapped? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, because there's dangerous information down there. And Aaron's dad wouldn't want the, the police finding it. But then again, if a police opened that door and an arrow went through his head... He'd be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so booby traps probably, probably wouldn't really make sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of love Levi's carelessness there. He's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Let's just yeah. get in there. <laughs> like, Levi, wait. And he's like, it's been 55 episodes. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they get in. It looks like a lab, right? They see books, bottles, all kinds of doctor stuff. And then they find a drawer with a keyhole. Open the drawer. Nothing in there. But there's a false bottom. And they find some books. And in that book, they find a portrait of Aaron's family. Now, how quickly did you realize that it's a big deal that there was a photograph in the book? At first, you're like, oh, it's a photograph, whatever. I think I realized pretty quickly, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Not to brag. <laughs> yeah, when I was like, Alun, a photograph? That must that means there must have been a camera. You know, like Gil, the episode ended ten minutes ago. I know. <laughs> also, so, they explained it on the back of the photograph, so I don't know why it would take you ten minutes after the episode to realize. <laughs> uh, so okay, so they find a photograph in the book, and then we get another flashback. We see Irwin. Um, talking about how the history books declare that the rest of humanity has been wiped out. And he says that's BS. It should say it is believed the rest of humanity has been wiped yeah. out. And he thinks that it's intentional that all the history books have been written to make us think that the rest of humanity is wiped out. Don't question it. But in reality, they can't really know that. All they know is right. what's in the walls. So they want to remind us that Irwin had that suspicion. Mm-hmm. And then Hanj, Aaron, Mikasa, they take the book back to town. And on the back of the photo, I guess on the walk back, no one's looked at the back of the photo yet. And now finally they do. And the back of the photo says, this is no illustration. Instead, this uses light reflected off a subject and burns the image on special paper. It's called a photograph. Mm-hmm. I come from a place outside the walls where humanity lives in elegance. Humanity has not perished. I pray the person who finds the book, this book is a fellow patriot. And then, sayonara. 
<laughs> Sakai. <laughs> and the episode's over. <laughs> yep. But then after the credits, we have well, before more. we go to the after court after credit sequence. I mean, first off, big revelation. There is humanities out there, and they have cameras, and they live in elegance. <laughs> <laughs> so were you surprised by this, or did you see it coming? I wish I was surprised by it, <laughs> <laughs> but I saw it coming. <laughs> now, is that because you just pieced it together in your head and you suspected it? Is it because they gave it away in the first you know, <laughs> 20 minutes of the movie, <laughs> the live action um, movie? So... I think the movie kind of ruined it, but mm-hmm. I, I don't remember. Before the movie, did we discuss this as a possibility, you and I? I we, think we, we did. I think we had to have, yeah. 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 I mean, I think anytime we see a, a movie or show where it's like this isolated old school city, mm-hmm. you kind of wonder, like, if you never see outside the 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 walls of the city, what's out there? And if you right. wonder that, you have to question... Maybe this takes place now. Who knows? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, village. same here. I wasn't super surprised, but I still like it, and it's still... it's it, it, More important than our being surprised at it is the fact that the characters are going to be surprised and the possibilities that this opens up for the next chapter in the story. Right. With this show, to me, it's not just about finding out what the secret is. It's the journey and watching the characters experience it. So mm. it, you know, I, I, I just like looking at it through the, their eyes. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's still a ton of questions. All we know, humanity lived. W- what is the state of humanity outside the wall? Mm-hmm. Uh, when did Aaron's dad get here? So how has it changed since he arrived? Are, Why don't they know about the rest of humanity? Does the rest of humanity know about Titans? Yeah. Do they know about them? There's a ton of questions. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering, are there major cities that mm-hmm. deal with the Titans as well? And how do they deal with them? Right. Yeah. Maybe they're on the side of the Titans. Maybe they're sending them over. Yeah. I don't know. Find out. Um, okay, so you said after credit sequence. Mm. So normally we don't watch after the credits because it's kind of a next time on. So if you don't want to know anything uh, from the next time on, you know, don't listen to us right now. Although, but b- before that part, <laughs> I th- it always says preview when, this time you sh- didn't when, say when that. we stop watching. So right. I think we should make sure we always watch through the credits just in case there is something. I think they do intend for you to see it. Yeah. yeah, dang, we got we have to go back to uh, all fifty five episodes and watch the next yeah. time on. This is like Arrested Development, where it's not really the next time on, and we've been missing the joke the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. So after the credits, we see two kids. We very quickly learn one of them is Aaron's father, Gr- Grisha. So it's a little girl and a little boy named Faye and Grisha. Uh, immediately, the style of the place looks like thirties. Kind of, you know, they have those like caps that everyone wore in the 30s. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then their mom, I'm assuming their brother and sister sort of seem that way. An older woman runs, ov- runs over and says, I told you not to forget your armbands. And she makes them put their armbands on. Kind of looks like a star um, on the armband. And then they see a blimp go overhead. And you start to hear narration from Aaron's dad. So you start to understand probably what we're seeing here are memoirs from uh, from those books. I'm assuming this this is uh, Aaron's dad writing about all of his experiences, and the narration specific. Uh, so, well, in the flashback, so Grisha says that the airships take off and land near the town. So he grabs Faye, and the two of them run out the wall before it closes because they want to see where the airship lands and all the guards yell for them to come back and they they run and then you hear Aaron's dad narrate that naive day of my youth when I had to face the truth of this world so I'm assuming that the next episode will mostly be flashback and we're going to see Aaron's dad as a kid and learn a little bit about the world outside the wall, how he got there and what the truth of this world is. Yeah. And what's interesting is you wonder 
is this the same city that they're living in now which it probably is but they have modern fencing they have a speaker system Mm -hmm. so did somebody purposely devolve the city and then hide that from the inhabitants uh it's interesting that you interpreted it that way because i didn't read it that way i'm actually thinking this isn't the same city Mm -hmm. Because they make reference to humanities out there. Mm -hmm. So there's the wall where Aaron and everybody lives in fear of the Titans. There's humans out there. And actually, Aaron's dad says, I come from outside. So I'm assuming this is some other place. And somehow Aaron's dad came to, you know, where we are, where we are now. Good point. Yeah. (laughs) See, (laughs) you're like, wow. So you couldn't figure out the photograph, but you could figure that out. (laughs) Impressive. (laughs) So, so one big takeaway for me is that the last few episodes, I keep thinking, is this show about to end? Like, is this the last season? And the problem is I'm afraid to Google anything about this show because I don't want to give anything away from the manga. But this is the first time in three or four episodes where it's feeling less like an ending and it could very well be a beginning of sorts mm. because this opens up a whole new world of possible stories. Because you know when Aaron learns about humanity outside the walls, his resolve to leave is going to be even bigger. And now we know there's something outside the wall worth finding. Mm -hmm. And just who knows what's going to happen from here. Is there going to be a conflict between the humans that we know and the humans on the outside world? This could be an ending or it could very well open up many more chapters in this story. I hope it's more chapters. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We're going to find out that this was the final episode. I'm like, oh, damn it. That would suck. The no, but it definitely isn't because it said to be continued at the end. Did it say that? It did on it the did. screen, yeah. Okay, phew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think that covers the episode. Uh, any uh, Any closing thoughts? Nope. Just very excited to see where all this goes. Yeah, I think uh, I'll say this is maybe my favorite season of Attack on Titan. If not my favorite, it's definitely my favorite since season one. It's been, I mean, the last three or four episodes have been absolutely incredible. Yeah, I I would say this season, so like last season, I think had a little too much of the political stuff. I think this season has a good balance Mm -hmm. between the action and the the political stuff I I missed a lot of the action last season it's good to see it come Mm -hmm. back same here and when you say last season you mean season three part one right uh I might I was you do I was actually based on what you're saying wasn't season two pretty political (laughs) uh it was but season three part one is when they they started to reveal all that stuff about uh erasing the memories Okay. There's all that confusing stuff about lineage, and I kept being like, hold on, what's going on here? And you're like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, season three, part one. <laughs> yeah, so been loving the season. Can't wait to see what happens next. And I feel bad for people that watched uh, Game of Thrones this season and don't watch Attack on Titan, <laughs> because this has been a great silver lining. I'm like, you know what? I love a Game of Thrones, but Attack on Titan's my new, my new Game of Thrones. It's never been better. Yep, so... Hopefully they know what they're doing and they end Attack on Titan the right way in season eight. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever we make more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.